Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Code Emporium where we're going to still talk further about the transformer neural network architecture. And specifically, we're gonna code out the multi-head attention mechanism. Now, before I get started with that, I just wanted to do a brief overview of the transformer architecture as I have been doing in some past videos. And then after that, I wanna get into some slight theory behind this multi-head attention mechanism followed by the crux of the video, which is the code. So let's get to it. This here is the transformer neural network architecture. It consists of an encoder and a decoder. And its main function here is for sequence to sequence modeling. And a sequence is an ordered set of tokens. And in the context of like natural language processing, sequences could be an ordered set of words to form sentences. And so the transformer neural network architecture can actually do some NLP tasks like English to other language translations. So let's just walk through an example here. So let's say we wanted to translate English to an Indian language called Hindi. In this case, we have my name is a J, which is actually my name. We'll pass it into the encoder of the transformer simultaneously. And this is going to generate four word vectors. Now, technically, these vectors are not word vectors, but they are word piece vectors, which are sub word vectors. But for simplicity, we're just gonna call them one, vec one word, one vector. Now we'll take these four vectors, pass it into the decoder, and then we'll have a start token to start our decoding process to generate Hindi words. And once we go to the end of the decoder, we'll start generating the first word. And in this case, the translation of my name is a J, which will start with Mera. This is quite the literal translation of my. We then use that word as the input for the next phase of the decoder. When we pass it into the decoder, we will generate the next word, which is Nam. And this is name. We then take this again, pass it into the decoder to generate the next word, which is a J. And we'll take this into the decoder to generate the final word, he. And so transformers can be used effectively for sequence sequence modeling to handle tasks like translation. Now the crux of this video is actually going to be on the multi-head attention mechanism. So I'm just gonna take an example word vector over here. This could be like one of the words of my name is a J. Let's just say that it's the net vector for name. This is going to be a 512 dimensional vector, which we break down into three component vectors. And every word like this is going to have a query vector, which represents what am I looking for? The key vector, which is what I can offer and the value vector, which is what I actually offer. And each of them are their own 512 cross one vectors. Now, in actuality, these vectors are actually each broken up into separate pieces. In this case, it's broken down into eight pieces and each piece is going to be a part of creating an attention head. So we have eight attention heads, so we break each vector down into eight pieces. And now each of these is then fed into some attention unit, which we will code out very soon, along with all the other words too. This is just a breakdown of the word name, but we also have the my, the name, then is, and a J, and all of them will be broken down in a very similar way, passed to an attention unit, and we're going to generate for each head this attention matrix, which is going to be a sequence by sequence in length if the sentence. In this case, it's a four cross four because there are four words in the sequence. And each of these rows will add up to a one because it's a probability distribution. And there will be eight such attention matrices as we have eight attention heads in this multi-head attention system. This is then going to generate other output vectors that are concatenated in order to generate a vector that actually has very good contextual awareness. Making this input word vector more contextually aware is actually the goal of this attention unit and this multi-head attention mechanism. Let's now code all of that out. So I'm gonna be importing a bunch of libraries and I'm gonna be using PyTorch for this demonstration. I now set a few variables. The sequence length is the length of my input sentence. And typically you would set a maximum sequence length so that all of your vectors are gonna be fixed size. In this case, it's going to be four. That's my name is Ajay. 
The batch size is going to help in parallel processing. In this case, I'm sending it to one for demonstration purposes. We then have input dimension, which is the vector dimension of every word that goes into the attention unit. Then D model is the output of the attention unit for every single word. And now this X over here is going to be some randomly sampled input since I'm not going to be creating the position encoding and the input phase right now. I'm just generating some random data. The input is going to be of batch size cross sequence length cross input dimensions, which is one cross four cost 512. Note that this X value is not the value over here, but it's the value that's input at this point just before we get into the multi-head attention phase. Now we're gonna be mapping the input from this dimension of 512 to three times the model dimension, which is again, three times 512. And this is done to create the query vector, the key vector and the value vector all concatenated. And all of them have all the eight attention heads, which we will split up later. We then pass the input to this layer to generate the QKV vector. And this is its dimension. It's one batch, four words, and each word vector is 1,536 in size. Now I wanted to get an idea of like, what are the kind of values that we see here? And since I'm sampling from a random normal distribution, you'll see the values that look like this, but this distribution of all the values in this entire tensor is going to be very different depending on how we generate the data, depending on the positional encodings and the inputs. Now we have eight attention heads that we're considering and each is going to be 512 divided by eight, which is gonna be 64. And so we will now reshape our QKV matrix to break down the last dimension into a product of the number of heads and of course three times the head dimension. And this three, just as a reminder, exists because it's a combination of the query vector, the key vector and the value vector. And so we get a tensor that looks like this in shape. Now I'm gonna be switching around just the second and the third dimensions so that the head is over here and then the number of sequences is over here. So it's easier to perform parallel operations on these last two dimensions. Now we obtain the query key and value vectors individually by basically breaking down this entire tensor by its last dimension and hence the input is minus one. And so this 192 breaks down into three components of 64 dimensions each. And this is where you see the query key and value vectors broken down, as I mentioned before. Now we're actually going to perform the attention mechanism. A lot of this process is kind of what I mentioned in the last video. So you can look at more details there if you want to get a much deeper explanation, but I'll still go through some parts of it since I'm doing it in PyTorch here and there I did it in NumPy. So first of all, we're gonna get the size of one of these vectors, which is DK. This should be 64 in our case. Now every word has a query vector and it's going to compare its query vector to every other word's key vector. And that's represented by this matrix multiplication over here. And we can represent that by this code. Now notice that you have to use the transpose function and you can't just do like a dot T to typically transpose because these are tensors that are four dimensional and not simply just two dimensional matrices. And so we specify the transpose along with the dimensions along which we want to transpose. In this case, we wanted to transpose the last two dimensions, which are the sequence length, as well as the dimension size or the head dimension size for every one of these words in every head. And so the last two dimensions of the query vector are like four cross 64. This will be a 64 cross four. And so we'll end with a up with a four cross four matrix, which is basically the sequence length by the sequence length. We're scaling here in order to make sure that the variance of these values is much smaller so that these values just don't go out of control, especially since this is a trainable machine learning model. This here is just a dummy example just to show how important transpose is and also that it takes in these two values of which dimensions along which you want to transpose your tensor. And it doesn't matter about the ordering as long as the same dimensions are present, it'll yield the same result. Now let's talk about masking. So we notice here that in the encoder, we don't really require any kind of masking. Whereas in the decoder, we require masking for self attention. And this is done to ensure that the decoder does not cheat. The goal of the attention mechanism is to gain context from words that are around it. During the encoding phase, we actually have all words which are passed in in parallel simultaneously. So we can generate vectors by taking the context of words that come before it, as well as words that come after. 
In the decoder, however, we generate words one at a time. So when generating context, we only want to look at words that come before it because we don't even have the words that come after it. Coming back to the code, we're basically gonna have our scale tensor, which is our one cross eight cross four cross four tensor that we generated just previously. And we're gonna fill this up with negative infinity values. And then we're going to basically take this mask and this is like an upper triangular mask where we leave the upper values above the diagonal the same as they are and I'll fill the lower diagonal with just zeros. This diagonal argument is just to say how many positions above or below the diagonal we want to actually fill with those zeros. And so if we just print out the mask for a single head, it'll look like this. And note that it's the same exact dimensions as our scaled tensor. So we can add them both together and we'll get, well, this is the tensor for one head, which will be a four cross four matrix. It's gonna look like this, where we have lower diagonal elements, the exact same as what scaled would have been because we're just adding zero and the upper diagonal elements would be whatever the negative infinity is. Now we're doing negative infinity over here specifically because we're going to be doing a softmax operation, which takes like exponents. And so the exponents of zero will become one, the exponents of negative infinity will become zero so that you cannot cheat and look forward. And so we can apply that softmax here because these tensor values are all over the place. And when you actually apply the tensor values, you'll see that the sum of each of these records will become one. And in this case, I just tried to do it for for this example, where we're taking e to the power of this first term divided by the sum of e to the power of all of these terms, which I've taken here. And you'll see it's like 0 0.6269. And on applying the actual attention, you'll see that that's exactly what you get here. Now we apply attention though, using the softmax built-in function. We'll apply it to our new scaled tensor. And the dimension we apply it to is the last dimension. We want to just apply it to this last dimension, which incorporates this row itself, row by row. We now take this value vector, which is, remember, this is what is actually being offered by every single word in order to generate the new value vectors. And the idea here is that these new value vectors are going to be much more context aware than the original value vectors and the original input vectors. And so we'll end up with, for every batch, for every head, for every word in the sequence, we'll have a 64 dimensional vector. Now I've created a function that does exactly everything that I just described. And I also added in an optional mask function, depending on whether we're dealing with the encoder or the decoder. So for example, if I just execute this, you'll see that we have an attention vector that kind of looks like this, but let's say that we actually pass in the mask that we just created. In this case, you'll see that the, the size is the exact same, but the attention vector is now going to be masked uh, for the decoder. So whatever I have this, the encoder, this is good for the decoder. And then we can now have all of the value vectors for every single attention head for every single word, which are 64 dimensional vectors. And then what we do now is we are going to now combine or concatenate all of those heads together for eight, heads, we're going to now make them 512 dimensional vectors, which is exactly the input dimension. And then so that these heads can also communicate with each other, the information that they've learned, we're just going to pass it through a linear layer, which is just a feed forward layer 512 cross 512. And this doesn't change the dimension. And so this output vector is now going to be much more context aware than the input vector was. Now, all of this code entirely, I've combined together as well by creating, well, this is the same function I wrote before, but I've also written a class called multi-headed attention, which is going to now take in a constructor, which will initialize some of these parameters that I talked about along the video, as well as a forward path. So when you execute a forward pass of our multi-head attention, it's going to execute the same exact lines of code that we just talked about. Now, I kind of executed this for some random inputs where the input dimension was much larger uh, and the batch size was also something that's more reasonable. I just put it as 30 instead of just one. And I execute the forward pass of this multi-head attention. And you'll see the same kind of results where the input batch 30, we have a like five words in the sentence and it's going to generate vectors of, let's say each of them is 1024. Then the query key and value vectors of all heads are combined to generate a 1,536 dimensional vector. 
This is then broken down into eight attention heads. We swap these two then attention heads as well as the number of send words in the sequence. And then we have break this down into query key and value tensors in our case. And each of them will be like 64 dimensional vectors for every word. We then have the attention value matrices for every single attention head, which we eventually concatenate. And then we also help them communicate with each other. And that's gonna do it for the code of this video. So I hope everything here just made a lot more sense now. For more intuition on like the transformer logic and also other code explanations, you can check out some of the playlists and also other videos on the channel. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you do like this video and you think I deserve it, please do consider liking and do subscribe for more awesome technical content. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.